welcome back to Dak Ram Studios, where today I'm gonna do another one of my real world unboxings. We've already got the hard part out of the way with that stop motion intro, and we're gonna do this DJI Pocket 2. Look at that pretty box. The creator combo. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so. We've already seen all the stuff come out the box. We're just gonna go over what it is. We got some uh, destructions here, a couple of pamphlet looking things here with different uh, words on them, which uh, not gonna look at. Don't really need to. All right, so get this out of the way, get it off the table. And we're gonna start out with what we got right here. All right, so first thing we got in here is the charging cable. It uh, is a dual USB-C, so you can plug it into one port on your charger, and then you can charge both the camera and this little guy, which is the next thing on the list we'll go ahead and do. This is the wireless adapter, which allows you to connect your phone wirelessly to the DJI Pocket 2. And it also serves as the transmitter and or receiver, probably just receiver, for the wireless mic, which is also... Hold it. Stop right there. That's wrong. Howdy. I'm Steamroller Steve. Steamroller Steve. Mr. Know-it-all. I correct that idiot Mark when he tells you something wrong or paints himself in a corner, which he does from time to time, but... When he hits a speed bump, I flatten it out just for him. So this right here, this is called the DJI do-it-all handle. And no, you don't charge it up. But when it's attached to the bottom of DJI Pocket 2, you can charge the camera up. Plug it in just like this. Snaps on and extends, damn power button. They need to fix that. I think I already know a fix for it. Either way, you can charge the camera up when it's on and it moves the charging port to the back right here. What he meant to say is you could charge this DJI wireless transmitter with the cable and the camera at the same time. Not the do it all handle. So, this do-it-all handle takes care of your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth connection. So you can control the camera with your phone or tablet. It's also a wireless mic receiver. It has a, a 3.5 millimeter jack on either a microphone or the headphones. Yes, it goes both ways, either a microphone or headphones for that little hole. It's got a built-in speaker and a quarter-inch threaded hole that and that USB-C charging port. All right, let's go back to Mark and see how long before that box of rocks needs me again. Um, thanks, Steamroller Steve. Man, that guy's mean. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about, this is a little transmitter receiver, and this comes with a little dead cat, which just kind of pops right on there like this. And it's two little slots, kind of just goes, it's weird. When I was doing the unboxing, this went right on there. All right, so there's a little dead cat. It's kind of cute looking. Sits on top. Looks like it clips on pretty good. Nice. All right, so... <clears throat> this uh, has a little clip on it, so you can clip it to your belt or clip it to your shirt if you want to clip it here. But it also has a 3.5 millimeter jack, so you can plug in an extra lavalier mic and wear it kind of like I'm wearing a lavalier mic hidden under the shirt right now. And then it wirelessly, transmit, wirelessly transmits to your camera. So those are two items done. And let's see what the next one we want to pick up. You have these two little adapters, one's for uh, USB-C and one's for lightning. So you can go to 
an Android phone or an iPhone. So you would slide that on the side, which we'll get to in a second because we're going to need to do one of them to complete the setup. It comes with this little wide angle lens, which is uh, pretty nifty. So we'll try that out down the line here. And everything that I do is real world unboxings. As I said, you've seen my, if you've seen my other videos, you'll see that I'm going to hit speed bumps. It's going to happen. I'm doing this live and whatever happens, <laughs> you're going to see. So the wide angle lens is out the way, adapters out the way. It comes with this little end piece here that the, you can put onto the bottom of the camera, which is another whole world of fun pulling the stuff off the bottom of the camera. So let's go ahead and pull out the camera so we can see how that looks. This is the case it comes with. The camera's inside of here. It's a nice hard case that won't go in focus. Go in focus there. All right, so let's do a better rotation here. Nice hard case. And the camera just kind of pops out like that. Easy peasy. And uh, this is the camera. It has a little slide right here. You can slide this off and reveal some uh, connections. And that is where you put your other things. I believe something's missing here. I believe there is the controller little knob missing. Did I not get that out? Yeah, there's some little... Oh, look at that. I knew something was missing. See? Speed bumps. Didn't dig down to the bottom of the box good enough. Come on out. Come on out. Really? Aha! This I failed to pull out. This is your little joystick zoom controller slash bonus button that slides on there also. See? Speed bumps. Now, I'm not going to put that in there right this second because it's going to be a pain to pull the bottom off. So, this whole bottom comes right off here. It's a little finicky, a little tough, a little uh, elbow grease, and they get harder as they go. Actually, this one's easy. Um, this one is a royal pain in the butt, but uh, I've already made a tool for that. I already cut myself once trying to play with this thing before I did any of this. Haven't set it up. The first thing we're going to probably have to do is do the firmware. I've done a few things, but uh, not the firmware. All right, so this kind of just pulls off the bottom. Like I said, it's a little finicky. You wiggle it off. That one wiggles off. And then uh, this pops on. You just line up the holes. You want to put the USB-C. And what this does is allows you basically to put your camera easily on the tripod. So this is the next thing we haven't touched. A little tiny tripod it comes with. You can put it on any quarter 20 mount. And uh, now you've got the camera on the tripod. Cute. Haven't fired it up yet. That's coming up. All right, so it comes with a little uh, hand wrist strap that goes into a little hole right here on the side. And I'm not putting that on. So that's about it. That's, that's the camera. It's got everything. All right, the next thing we're going to do here is show you this little case here can store some of these little things. Not everything, just some of them. So you can put in your two phone adapters here and they go in there. The lens also can fit in here. There's a little spot right there you can see. It's got a magnet. It just kind of drops in there like that. So you can see there, that's better. So there's your storage. The uh, little tripod also can uh, go in there. That uh, kind of folds up here into a little shape like that. And you can twist that on the back side of the case. So it stores there, which is kind of not good. <laughs> That's the first time I tried to put it on there. I don't know. I don't want to twist it too much to where if that's where it's going to 
want to wind up. That's a speed bump. Didn't think that one through, did they? I don't know if you can adjust the twist on this to get it right, but that seems like it's a pain in the butt. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of wonky on you. Yeah. You don't want to go too tight. It's going to snap. You come back, it's going to be loose. So I don't know about that one. I'll play with it later, but that's speed bump number one. This fits in there, but it doesn't necessarily do what you would think it would. Maybe with a screwdriver you can adjust that, but either way, it's kind of still even in there. If it was in there right, it'd be bending up and out. So if it was, that's how it would be. I don't know. I don't like it. Probably will never put it on there anyway. So I got other tripods that I wouldn't carry this little turd around with me. <laughs> that speed bump two, not one. I swear that boy can't tie his own shoes. He probably buys them Velcro ones. The tripod is fine, kind of. It's on a little ball head and you gotta give it a little elbow grease and break the seal like that. And then you can move it around. Just like that. It's still a little wonky and not the best tripod in the world. It doesn't wanna sit too flat. It's a little little wonky once you break that seal. And it's a little tough to get off. I don't know why they even put that screw on the bottom there, but uh, you can turn it all day long with that ball head. You got to give it just a little bit of pressure to unscrew it. So that's a kind of bad design. Either way, that's how you use the tripod. All right, back to Mark. I know how to tie my shoes. Still not gonna use that tripod. All right, so we got the storage there. I know I'm gonna be needing this iPhone one here, so let's uh, take that out. We got our camera. We got our tripod mount on here. We'll leave that on there. This, you have no storage for, so you better get a little accessories case or something to put all these little bonus things like this. Once you take it out, you don't have a place to put it. So those two are going to go missing probably first because you can't keep them with it. Um, this is probably something you're just going to keep in all of the time. Um, unless you got to plug it into your phone, which to do the firmware update, which we're going to do first when we fire this up, you need to use this. You cannot connect to it wirelessly to do the firmware update. So we're going to put this on right here, right now. And, oh, see, I actually just fired this thing up, which I did numerous times while setting this up or trying to play with these little bottom pieces. And uh, one thing you don't want to do, which I did do is the first thing that comes up on this thing right out the box is language. And of course you want to pick English if you speak English, but uh, I accidentally, while fidgeting with this thing, hit Chinese and turn the thing into Chinese, which I know the menu luckily to go through to put it back to English without knowing what's really on the screen, except for the fact that after turning off and on a few times while I was messing around with it, it eventually wanted to do a force registration. So it was in Chinese mode on the screen with saying something about Mimo, Mimo, which is the app that you got to use. And eventually I, you know, I couldn't find anything online or there's DJI was closed whenever I found this error, which I'll, the, the picture I'm putting on the screen right now of what it was, a Chinese error message. And just because it said Mimo, I was like, okay, maybe I need the Mimo app. So I plugged this in the phone and was able to get out of the thing. It forced me to register with DJI and log in the app, which I always logged in the app with other devices I have. But I got out of it because the screen wouldn't do anything. You couldn't do anything at that point. 
whenever that message was on there. So luckily I got out of it and I thought this thing was broken or I ruined it right out of the box, but it's good. It's working now. So I guess I should probably peel all these little sticker things off. Uh, let's see, let's turn this off again. We are in English, no more Chinese. Now, whenever you turn this off, it locks for X amount of time. There's a green flashing light and it allows you to snap this thing or put this thing back in the case again, but you can't do it with this on here, obviously. Um, so I'm not gonna push it all in there. Don't do that. So no, now ahead, here's another lesson learned. You can't put it in with a cell phone adapter in the case, but you can put it in with this, because I already tried that, and you can put it in with the other little piece that you're gonna lose right here one day, but uh, this little door obviously can put on the case. So um, I'm gonna take this out again and show you. So with this on, boots up, instantly like one second this thing turns on so i'm going to hold the top power button on the side turn it off and it's off so now it's kind of like in a locked mode it's not all floppy and you can just drop it in here where it's supposed to go and the gimbal's tight but you'll see here probably by now by the time i take this out of here it's all uh limp see it's kind of mm -hmm. And it, it, it's not going to lock. You'd have to manually put it back to where it needs to go to get it in there. And if you turn it, it's like, Ugh. So the simplest way to get it back in here, if you do this, is just turn it on real quick. Let it boot up, which takes a second. Turn it off. And now it's in the little lock mode. And put her back in the case while you've got the time. But put it in the right way. There we go. I already messed that up. There. goes in like this. To do all right, so now let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna pause this for a second and uh, check all my video. I'll be right back after I get set up for the iPhone stuff. All right, so we're just gonna do this firmware update thing live here. Um, I wanna show you one thing that uh, is hard about this piece to come off. It does not like to come off. It is very hard to pull off. Maybe it'll get better with age, and this is the one that made me turn into the Chinese mode on accident because I'm trying to take it off. Um, you got to get it at a good angle. I already made a tool, which is basically just a quarter 20 little thing on this uh, post that I can just screw in here a little bit. And uh, it makes it easier to pull off. You still got to get a kind of decent grip on there, but it comes right off. A lot easier pulling it out the bottom there than it is trying to get it, especially if you've got any type of sweaty or wet hands, it's gonna, it'll get you, it got me. This uh, actually gave me a good cut right there. All right, so let's get back to doing the firmware stuff. Put this back on and pieces we're gonna need. We're gonna need this iPhone adapter. So I'm gonna put this in there, boom. Put it in there. Let's move all this stuff out of the way. I'm sliding it over here. And we're going to bring up this. Get it lined up. All right, this is the iPhone. And we're going to plug in the side of the iPhone. Let's move this back a little. Our little Osmo. Now they make uh, all kinds of different accessories, but most of the accessories that are out there for the old Osmo that hold it, like phone holders that hold it on the side, they still work with this because it's basically the same shape and everything. So let's get into my phone. Unlock. Seriously, unlock. All right, I guess I need to start a screen recording with this phone. Why aren't you coming down? Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> this is not my I, my iPhone 11. This is the old 6. Alright, there's a screen recording button. 3, 2, 1, action. Alright, so we're recording. We're good to go. Alright, so let's go into... First thing we got to do is go into the DJI Mimo app. Now, I told you, I 
mess this thing up and turn it into Chinese and got it all locked up. I was forced to register this. That was basically what it was complaining about. Now, another thing I haven't put in here is an SD card. So that's probably going to complain. I don't know. We'll see if it lets us do the firmware. And I didn't take off all these little stickers. So let's, let's peel. I'm going to turn the gimbal off for a second here. Let's go ahead and yank this thing out. Sorry, iPhone. I'm peeling off all these little stickers. There's one. There's this back sticker. Here's uh, the lens sticker. All right, because it's probably not going to be happy with the lens sticker on there. All right, let's put this back in the phone. Yeah, device to get disconnected. Okay. Um, let's get this better on the screen. All right, let's fire up the little thing. There's a little button on the side. One second, turn on. There it is. And now it should be happy. It's complaining about no SD card, but well, there is no SD card. And okay, no SD card. So right out the box, right out the bat here, it's saying firmware update. So of course we want to do this firmware update. And I'm going to hit yes to do that. And you can see it says install firmware. And I can't read what's on the screen right now because of course it's sideways and lots of glare. But uh, we'll be able to read it whenever I make the video. Whenever I edit it, you'll be able to see it. I'll put it on the screen right here so we can read it, but I can't translate it right now. Or I can't dictate it right now. But you can read it. I know you can. I'll zoom in on it. So right now, I guess it's, uh, oh, it's waiting for me to hit install. So let's hit install. Um, or is it, I'm going to turn this a little bit here so I can see, oh, note. Please ensure device is plugged into SD card and uh, says please ensure the device is plugged in SD card and remaining capacity is greater than 100 meg. So speed bump. Here we go. Another one. I need to put an SD card. So let me crack open an SD card here. I got to go find it real quick. Um, so. Just give me a second. I'm going to get an SD card. All right, so I got myself an SD card here. Had to go to the box. I ordered this with this, but uh, I failed to have it. And that's what live things, when we do these things, I'm leaving all this in there. It's all going to be in the setup. My unboxings are long, but they're very informative, and I do things that teaches you things to not do, which is also good. So here's another fidgety. Uh, I'm using SanDisk SD card. It's a, it's a 128 gig. They're pretty good. I use them in every DJI device. All my drones, they all are good. Never had a problem with them. 128 gigs lasts. Except they're a pain in the ass to get out of here. Alright, did I break the seal? I heard a seal break. But that didn't really help, now did it? Come on, you turd. You should be prepared whenever we do videos. Seriously. Alright. <laughs> get that out the way. Freaking sticker sticking to me. All right, so now let's uh, reverse engineer this stuff here. We got to start over. Uh, I still got my screen recording going on the phone. Let's uh, go ahead and just, uh, should we do this? No, I'm going to sit home. All right, so the Osmo's on still. Let's deep power that. It's off. All right, so there is an SD card slot right here on the side, and that's what it's crying about wants an SD card. So let's put an SD card in. We got a 50-50 chance of which way it's going to go. Think I'm going to do it right the first time? No. It goes the other way. It goes like that. 
I had a 50-50 chance I did it wrong. So you can know now that it goes to the back. Laces out, label to the back. Now you know when you do it. You won't put it in the wrong way. All right, so now we gotta put this back in here. We got an SD card. Said I wanted to be charged up pretty good too. We think we should uh, give it some juice while we're doing it too. Let's give it some juice. I got this uh, power charger here. Let me, uh, there we go. Just to be on the safe side. I wanted to be juiced, so now it's juiced. We got the battery charging. All right, back to the phone. DJI Mimo. Let's try this again. We'll fire it up. It still shouldn't be able to find this thing. It's not on. All right. I'm just going to back up. Go back. It's probably got to reconnect. Okay, so it found it. There we go. Starting with the firmware again. There's the firmware. And install. And this time, I don't think it's asking. Yeah, it didn't bitch about the SD card. <laughs> And it didn't say anything about not being charged up all the way, so it's installing real time. 62% says device disconnected. I think it's because it's rebooting the device after firmware update. What's it say here? I gotta turn it. Device disconnected. Please check the device connection status. Well, I believe that it sent the firmware over to the device, and that's why it's uh, disconnected. Looks like it's rebooting, or thinking, hopefully. Hopefully it's not bricking itself. Should I hit OK? I'm hitting OK. Because it's going to come back up after it reboots, I think. Alright. It's going to reconnect. And then we just got... Oh, it must have reconnected. So that was it. It's done. Firmware upgrade complete. Let's unplug this power cord. Take it off here. See if we can uh, hit the record button and record some stuff. Gimbal looks like it's looking straight up in the air. Now, one thing that I believe is that uh, whatever direction it's pointed when it's turned on is where it's going to think that is the center, if that makes sense. Basically, you should turn it on straight up and down. And that way, when you turn it on, it's going to be looking straight out. Which possibly, let's test that theory. So you can see, it just connected to the app. It ran the app all by itself too, which is pretty nifty. Um, that smooth action. Now here, let's, let's do some recording. That's what this thing's for. So now we're recording. I'm just... Here you can see my camera set up or my monitor set up there. We're getting smooth action. This is my studio, makeshift studio in a room. There's the lights. Here's where we're going to play with that in a little while whenever we go to the menu. But uh, I make these little holders are pretty cool to mount things to do these videos. But uh, yeah, this thing's looking pretty smooth. I'll put this in. All right, stop it. So let's go back to that theory of I said that keep it upright. So I'm gonna turn this off. And if you remember, it was in here whenever we turn it on and then it was still pointing directly at the camera. So it's pointing forward. So that could be a little trick to help you out doing stuff. Um, let's turn it on. Thanks, it thinks. It's connected. It's gonna connect it. All right, so yeah, it's it's pointing up, so it thinks the default uh, direction is up. So you could probably go turn it on like that and maybe get some good z-axis fixes. I don't know, maybe not. Either way, turn it on whenever it's straight up and down. That way, it's going to be pointing forward whenever you uh, fire it up. All right, so now we got the firmware in there. We don't need this thing plugged in the phone anymore, so let's go ahead and 
take it out of the phone. We'll put the phone back in this little thing here. And let's see, we'll get rid of the iPhone adapter and find, see, you know, it's going to need, definitely going to need a little box. I'm thinking that this will probably be a pretty good storage case in the end. Just keep all the pieces that you're never going to keep with you, like the little lid. See those two pieces? They're going to live in here, I think. That's where they're going to live. Because I'll probably never need those again. Or if I do, I'll know they're in here. So save your box. It's a cute little box. All right. Let's uh, throw that on the ground. Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding right now. Um, Please try a little later. Yeah, well, I wasn't talking to you there, Alexa. Oh, no, I shouldn't have said her name again. Sorry, should I have? I'm having trouble understanding that, right now. That, that. Please try a little later. Should have known. Don't say her name. All right, so now I got this little joystick thing plugged in here. Oh, now it's updating the control stick firmware. Look at that. Automatic, didn't even know it was going to happen, but it's happening. It's doing updates. Must have been in the firmware. It said, oh, look, joystick needs updated. Update successful. That's a plus. And tap to learn how to use control stick. Sure, why not? We're going to learn how to use control stick. Same time, both of us. Or all of us. All right, it says press, press a button, oh, press a button <laughs> to switch between gimbal follow modes. All right, so I don't know if I turn this, oh, it's in the right mode. Okay, so we're going to press a button. That's tilt locked. Okay, so tilt is locked. You can't see. Well, you can look in the camera here. The tilt is locked. Front and top is not. All right, so press A button to switch gimbal follow modes. Okay, we'll do it again. Now it's an FPV mode. So that, that does ooh, wonkiness, if you can see the gimbal. It's first person view mode. The worst mode of a gimbal, unless you really want to use it. All right, and press it again. So now this is follow mode. It's following. That's usually what you want unless you're doing the active track following. All right, so we've done that. We've done those three modes. So we're going to flip this to go to the next dot. This one is double press the A button to switch between zoom and gimbal control. Okay, so I guess this is right now the joystick which you can't tell maybe can you tell can you see if I no you have to look at this camera I'm controlling the gimbal left I'm controlling the gimbal right alright so now I'm peeking up we're down alright so double tap Double tap to switch gimbal to the zoom. So now I double tap A. So now this joystick should work. Zoom of the camera. I wonder if I should be recording all this. I'm going to hit record. Alright, so yeah, we're recording now. But then I left the tutorial. <laughs> Alright, so now this is zooming. You can see. You'll see because I'll put it on the screen. It's, I don't know what, if I'm in 4K... Well, it's 1080p 30 is what it says on the bottom. I didn't change any settings on this thing. So it does 4x zoom in 1080p and I guess uh, 2x zoom in uh, 4K. They say it's not supposed to be lossy zoom, but I highly doubt it. All right, so let's stop recording. Now, I don't know how to get back to that tutorial. I don't know what the third dot was going to be. I hit record. Well, maybe I just hit record. So all that I just did. No, nope, it didn't get recorded. We're 12 seconds in. I was zooming in, zooming out. All right, so let's stop this. All right, so I did the firmware update. 
we didn't get to see what the third dot did because I left it. We'll never know. And I don't know how to get back in there. Oh, way to go, Mark. You done again. It's almost like you're doing this on purpose. Hey, if you made it this far, you should probably hit like on this video along with that subscribe button and ring that bell to be notified of Mark's new videos. Okay, so here's how you get back into any help or tutorial again on your Pocket 2 camera. First you fire it up, which takes one second. So we was in that tutorial about the uh, control stick. So if you swipe down from the top right here, you can scroll over one screen and that's your joystick controller. If you hold down right here, it asks you if you want to watch the tutorial again. So you just say, yep. Yeah. And there you go. That's where we were at. We were on that second dot and then I left it or Mark left it. <laughs> so what'd that say? It says move the control stick to move the gimbal. So that's all we missed was you just go like this and you can go up and down or left and right with the gimbal. You ever heard of school YouTube? Maybe you should take a class. All right, back to Mark. All right, and now we know how to revive the tutorials. And yes, I know about the school of YouTube. I'm a student and a teacher. All right, on to the Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and remove the bottom. Let me get my little tool out here. Makes my life easier. All right, so don't hit the power button. And look at that. Easy peasy. They should come with one of these to remove it quick and easy. Anyway, let's play with the Wi-Fi adapter. Let's see if we can get that to work. Let's get the phone working. All right, so this is going to plug in. I'm going to line these two things up here. And snap it on. Up oh, and see, look, I actually hit the button. It's very easy to actually hit that side button and turn it on. Just know that ahead of time. That's how I turned it into Chinese. <laughs> All right, so it's off. And looking at this here, this is how you remove this. You can't just yank this one off. And this one, you don't need a tool. It's pretty easy. And also, I never said this has a quarter 20 on the bottom of it so you can put on a tripod with this you gotta flip the switch down flip and pull at the same time so it's easier to take your thumb pull it down and don't hit that button and it just comes off a little wiggle and it comes off apparently you don't want to just rip it off or else it's going to probably break them clips in there and you don't want to do that it's probably not cheap to get another one all right, so let's go ahead and plug this back on here. And let's see if we can get a wireless connection in the phone. So let's fire the phone back up here. Unlock. I'm so used to the new iPhone. Without the button, I can't work this old one anymore. This is just my dummy phone I use for connecting Wi-Fi devices and things like that. So, all right, go in the Mimo app. We're going to turn on our uh, device here. I'm going to do it straight up so we got the right angle of the gimbal. And let's find me. All right, so there we go. So now we got the gimbal. We'll set it right here. Actually, do I have another? No. Ah. We have a tripod. Let's use it. Let's use this little tripod. Put it on a little tripod. Maybe. Alright, so now we got on a tripod. What's it saying here? Upgrading something. Upgrading do it up. Oh, here we go. Another automatic happening thing. Updating the firmware in the do-it-all handle, which is the thing we just plugged in here. So let's wait for that to happen.
So basically, my suggestion is, as I'm learning this, is to update the firmware and then plug all these little pieces in here. You plug this in, the control stick, it's going to do a firmware update. First time you plug this in, it's going to do a firmware update. The firmware is updating the firmware is what it looks like it's doing a downward spiral. So you don't got to have it plugged in the phone once all this is done. Un it's done. Until the next time there's a major firmware update, then you got to use a little adapter and plug it in the phone. Does that make sense? We're learning. No manuals. We're learning all. All right, so now this should uh, be ready to be connected via Wi-Fi. So let's go back in here and go into our MIMO app. Connect. Join the MIMO Wi-Fi network. Sure. Device connection, did it? Did it connect? There we go, it connected. I got a little thing on the... F All right, so once it's connected, nothing shows on the screen. I don't think you can't do squat when you're connected to when you're controlling it with the uh, phone. None of the buttons, nothing, yeah. It's useless. All right, so now we've got... Let's turn this and f face it towards me. I'm sure there's a way to do a quick selfie mode here. All right, so now we got a facing towards me. How do we control the gimbal with the phone? Is that the controller? No, nope, that's the center. Looking for the up-down gimbal control. No. Grid. All right, so yeah, I guess, like I said, it blanks the screen out, but you can still control the gimbal, so I'm... Controlling it with a joystick here. Let's turn it around. Rotate, rotate. Here we go again. Does this guy know anything? You can easily control the gimbal from your phone right here in this little area on your phone. It's kind of hard to see sometimes with the glare and this lights. I understand how uh, Mock couldn't find it, but uh, all you got to do is just use these little arrows here. And uh, you can go up and down and left and right, control it however you want. You can also pinch the screen to zoom in and out like that. So that gives you your zoom. So even though the screen's off when connecting to the gimbal, you can also control it with the stick. So I'm going up. I'm going down, I'm going left or right, my other right, I'm going left, and you can double tap this button right here, and still, even though there's nothing on the screen, you can zoom in and out, so I'm zooming in and out with the control stick, in, out, and you can double tap it again. Double clap, and now I'm controlling the gimbal back and forth. So that's how you control the gimbal with the phone, or you can do it with the actual camera, even though you don't see anything on the screen. So you can also switch this to selfie mode. So if you triple click on this button right here, one, two, three, it does a rotate. And there's Steamroller Steve, and you can triple click it again, and do, do, do. So right next to that record button, that triple click that button, and it'll do a selfie. All right, let's go back to Mark. Thanks, Steamroller Steve, for bailing me out again. That was actually some good info. All right, now let's test the active track. All right, so everything's on auto. So it's overexposed, but that's fine. I got a lot of light in here. Let's see if we can get it to follow me. Eee. All right, so I'm dragging this on the screen here. So find me. All right. Oh, look at that. Let's record. We're recording. 1080. I'm gonna have to upscale it. I won't put it the full screen. 
It's following me. What happens if I get up? Oh, uh, look at that. Can't go too far. I'm corded. I lost me. It lost me. Find me. Drag in a box. Oh, uh, there. It lost me again. Hello? Can you follow my hand? Follow my hand. You lost my hand. Follow my fist. I want you to get back looking at me. Alright, there's the fist. <laughs> I lost my fist. I'm sure it can do better than this. I'm pretty sure it's just a bad contrast thing. Alright, so that about covers the unboxing and setup of this thing, speed bumps and all. So stay tuned for the next video where we're going to learn how to use it. Are you serious? You're just going to end this setup video just like that? You didn't even finish. What about the wireless microphone transmitter? We got to test that. Don't worry. I got it. All right, let's do a quick test. The first time you fire up the wireless mic transmitter, it'll update the firmware just like the uh, control stick and the do-it-all handle did. Mark, I already did that. And you'll see a green light on here whenever it's connected. So we should be good to go. I'm actually recording already. So when I turned it on, there's a little tiny microphone that indicates that the microphone's hooked up. So this whole time I've been talking, we've been recording on the wireless mic. At least I'll show it in the video when I switched. So let's uh, see how this audio sounds. This is just the transmitter by itself. Does it sound okay? I reckon we're going to find out when Mark edits this video. So, all right, let's plug in a lav mic and listen to that. So I'm going to take this off for one second here. And I got this cheapo $15 little lav mic here. And uh, we'll see how good that works if I can get stupid thing to focus. Come on. What's going on? Why aren't you focusing? There we go. So, yeah, this is just a cheapo Amazon mic. I've got $80 ones that... I've had issues with, but we're going to use this one right now. See if it does any better. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this off just in case. Plug it in. And oh yeah, you can use a TRS or a TRRS connection. This is a TRRS microphone. And you can also use in the wireless microphone transmitter, TRS. Come on camera, what's your problem today? Seriously, focus. There we go. It's trying to see my face in the phone is what it is. All right, so you got TRS with uh, two rings, and you got TRRS with three rings. And nicely enough, DJI made the wireless transmitter possible to use either one. So I'm going to plug this microphone in right here, try to get it in stupid focus. All right, so here we go. Plugging it in, and I'm going to turn it on. And once you get a connection with the uh, wireless lav mic, then uh, it's going to turn amber right there instead of green. So that means we got a connection. So right now, we're probably getting some static because I'm moving this mic around, but let me put it right here. And we are still recording, so all this noise I'm going to cut in or cut out. But let's... Uh, Sorry, I'm having trouble understanding right now. I did not Please say wait. Alexa. I said let's uh, shut up. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we're listening to a cheapo $15 microphone and it's just using a TRS connection. So stop. Haha, -ha. this time you were wrong, Steamroller Steve. It's a TRRS microphone you plugged in there, not a TRS. Who's stupid now? All right, back to you. Let's just see how this sounds. Is it sounding any good? Is there any crackling or transmission issues with this wireless lav mic or the lav mic on the DJI wireless uh, 
damn camera, what's wrong with you today? Never have this problem. Stupid, Sony's always focus. All right, more problems fixed either way. So if you got any questions about any of this stuff we talked about, please ask Mark down in the comments. I'm Steamroller Steve. Bleh, 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 I'm Steamroller Steve. Okay, we're done, so. Thanks for watching another one of my Dacram Studios real world unboxings where you get to see me screw up so you don't. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by Dacram Studios. Please hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell. And maybe watch another video. Have a wonderful day.